Hi, hi guys. Um, so nice to see that we have such a nice turnout. We have almost 90 people joining. Uh, welcome everybody. So great to have you all here. And we're really looking forward to um, the really nice content that we have prepared for you. And um, I saw that uh, some of you, actually quite many of you, have already introduced yourselves in the chat. And um, we're really looking forward uh, to hearing more about, about, uh, about you in a bit. Um, my name is Joanna. I am the head of, of events at Word Berlin, and I'm here with my colleagues that I will shortly introduce as well. Um, this um, is a webinar that we organized, uh, that is organized by Word Berlin, but um, it's uh, in the framework of the Reframe project, uh, which I will tell you a bit more about um, in a bit. Yeah. So um, I would like to also introduce you to my colleagues uh, who also put, uh, put together this webinar and they are also um, here with us today. So uh, maybe we can hear more from Anish. Let's see, maybe we have a bit of technical problems. Uh, we have, yeah. I don't know if you can see them. Um, ah, do you hear him? Ah, yes. Hi, Hi. everyone. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm Anish Katru, and I'm working with the Wear team as the Strategic Partnerships Manager. And during this wonderful webinar, I will be happy to answer any of your questions. So feel free to write any questions during our keynote speech or during our panel discussions in the QA and A section, and I will be happy to bring it to the speakers. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna, and I'm a chat moderator. So uh, I'm happy to see your questions, or I'm, I'm keep tracking the chat always. Uh, and actually, I'm surprised how active our audience is and how diverse it is. So please keep, keep writing. Great, and um, thank you, Anish and Anna. Um, and I would also like to introduce Thomas Knam, our CEO. Um, yeah, who's gonna tell us a bit more about uh, himself and uh, about the, where it, what we do here at Word Berlin, actually. Yeah, thank you, Joanna. Um, yeah, I'm very happy that we that we can host this today. Um, and thanks for coming all. Uh, thanks for showing up. So, um, Joanna, if you can maybe bring up uh, the slides that we have prepared. So, yeah, thank you. Um, Varied Berlin is a company that um, is uh, hosting the Varied Innovation Summit. Uh, maybe you have heard of it. It's one of um, uh, Europe's uh, biggest events in uh, uh, wearable electronics. Our topics are um, textiles, electronics, startup scene, uh, bringing together investors and startups. Um, yeah, um, and here's a few slides um, and impressions um, of the last event um, where you can see that really things come together that have been. Um, uh, haven't been together for so long, like technology and, and, and clothing. Um, yeah, that's our goal. We really want to build um, the industry here because we think, uh, if you think about it, our cell phones, they have developed so much. Uh, my grandfather hasn't had uh, even a, a landline phone, um, but basically we were wearing the same clothes. Um, so there you can see what kind of a gap we have here. Um, yeah, so maybe if we go on with the next slide. Yeah, thanks. There you can see like the, 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 the setting. We have a nice stage and, and the audience. We can learn, connect and develop together. Exhibition area. We are now growing even more. Like uh, as you can see on the picture, the, it was, the space was too little. We, want, we need to grow more. That's why we also changed the, the venue for next time. Um, yeah, and, and we really want to engage people, um, make business partners, um, help them to, to develop relationships 
and, and inform the future of, of fashion. Yeah, uh, we also have startup pitches um, that goes from um, smart uh, underwear to uh, safety clothes to um, yeah to to things that could change our daily lives. Uh, next one, please. Yeah, uh, like this tracking suit um, by Rokoko, which is used by the gaming industry, for example. And they gave a presentation not only on stage, but also uh, in between the audience uh, members. And it was really exciting to watch them do this live. Um, and uh, Varied Berlin is also a product development agency. We support um, big brands and, 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 and companies um, with their uh, goals to enter the wearable tech market. Um, this day you can see um, the electronics that we do. For This is for Elton shoes, something we implemented in a shoe. Um, um, uh, here you can see the shoe and, and the... Uh, the interesting part of this is not only that the shoe can light up, it's also um, that it's producible and that it um, that it really makes sense as a business. Uh, if you if you would like to know more um, about these kinds of things that we do, just get in touch with us. Um, we are also working for other companies like H and M, or if you as you can see in the next slide, um, Siemens. We built this device for them that warns um, uh, trail workers that repair the trails for trains, train trails. Um, from the, it warns them from incoming trains because uh, I was also shocked by this. But every year, ten people die in uh, while they are constructing um, train trails uh, in Germany alone. And um, in, in the 21st century, we are all uh, still. Um, uh, relying on on, on human uh, vision to to tell people if there's a train coming or not, and this device can automatically uh, um, warn workers if there's a train coming in, and uh, it comes together with a software solution that's also cloud-based and server-based, and it connects um, to the to the devices. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's uh, one of the big parts um, that um, we are working on. And another part is also supporting others with their work in um, variable technologies. Um, and yeah, let's let's have a look at the slide. The next uh, the next slide, please. So um, the one of one big part is the reframe project for us um, that we do for the European Commission, and we're really proud that we can do this. And I would like to ask Joanna, my colleague, to introduce. Um, the audience to this project and what this is about. So, uh, guys, if you have a question, um, let us know. Now it's the right moment. Maybe, Anna, do you want to... Do you have something? Is there a question from the audience? Uh, right now, we have just introduction from our audience, and it's very interesting to observe. Uh, we have people with different backgrounds, a lot of uh, designers, people who do researches, and they just excited to see what's coming today and get to know more about smart textiles. Great. Okay. Thanks. Uh, people keep keep asking questions. Now is the chance um, to also to meet the other people in the chat. We're bringing up a few poll questions as well. And now, yeah, Joanna, thank you for giving me the chance to introduce the company. And now let's go on with the webinar. Yeah, thank you so much, Thomas. Um, I hope uh, it was as interesting for everyone else to know about all the exciting things that we are planning. Um, and um, now I wanted to tell you more about uh, Reframe and uh, what we do. Um, so Reframe is a, Europe, a, a project that's funded by the European Union, um, where the main goal is uh, to find uh, new ways of thinking about uh, the future of fashion and what it means for us and what it means for society. Um, and um, we at Wear It Berlin, our main roles are, um, we are uh, man uh, the hub managers of one of the three hubs. Um, so it's divided, um, there are three hubs all over Europe and uh, Wear It Berlin is managing one of the three hubs. Uh, and I will get a bit more into detail um, a bit later about this. And 
uh, we are also uh, managing the open innovation platform that we are building. Um, yeah, so um, as I said, we enable uh, 20 artists with uh, 55,000 euros each. And um, in each uh, project um, is, uh, is lasting nine months and we give artists the opportunity to work with uh, technologists. So, um, you know, we bring together the art and technology. Uh, so we bring together international art artists with well-renowned scientists and we give them the chance to push the boundaries even more and uh, co-create and co-research. Um, and uh, so this is a, a very big part uh, for us in Rhythm, um, to, um, to to observe the transfer between art and technology. And uh, we are super excited because we, um, um, oh, here you can see, for example, and uh, this is an ex a great example of uh, co-creation in which the artists and technologies are working together. This picture was actually taken at the Fraunhofer Itzit M facilities in um, a few months ago. Um, and it's, uh, it's really an interesting process and we're super happy to observe it and we're looking forward to hearing more also about, uh, about it from, from our artists and from our keynote speaker in a bit. Um, and this is the Berlin Hub. Um, these are the three, um, the three teams, um, the three artistic teams together with the scientific partners and with um, the Word Berlin team, so the Hub managers. Um, and as I said, you will get to, to hear about, uh, about it more in a bit. Um, and also, if you are interested in applying, um, the second call uh, is going to start on July 1st. You can hear it, uh, you can find out more about it on reframe.eu. Um, and if I haven't managed to convince you to apply, I hope that um, our keynote speaker and our panelists are going to, are going to, um, succeed in doing this. Um, so just to, um, to get started, um, I would like to introduce, um, you will, by the way, also have the chance to ask more questions about this in the chat. Um, my colleagues are going to signal me if, uh, if there's anything, um, uh, happening. So um, don't worry, we'll try to answer all your questions and interact as much as possible. Um, so I would like to introduce to you Christian Dis, uh, who is a researcher at Fraunhofer ITZM. Um, um, he specialized on technologies for stretchable and textile integrated electronics, and he has more than 10 years experience in this. Uh, and he's one of the lead scientists for the projects in the where it, in, in the Berlin hub for for Reefim. So, uh, Christian, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks, Joanna, for the yeah. nice introduction. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear from you. Hi. Um, I think I can I can start my presentation. Yes, please, if you're ready. Um, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay, guys. Um, Joanna, thank you for the introduction and thank you for um, inviting me to give this keynote speech. Yeah, my name is uh, Christian Dietz. And um, as Joanna mentioned, I work for over 10 years at the um, Fraunhofer Institute for Reliability and Microintegration. It's called Fraunhofer ISM here in Berlin as a research scientist and my work focus is on stretchable and textile integrated electronic systems. Um, so today my audience is a little bit different uh, than usually but even if you are a beginner or already an expert in the field of electronic textiles um, you will have sooner or later um, the problem to select suitable conductor materials or interconnection technologies for the integration of electronic into textiles so in my short talk today, I will introduce you to three new and novel uh, technologies that were developed in our research group that's called System on Flex here at ISM. And yeah, the goal of the uh, new developments 
was um, to create uh, reliable and industrially producible uh, e-textile systems. Um, while I'm giving this presentation, I will also show some uh, yeah, application examples that have already been implemented with the here presented technologies. Um, maybe let me introduce you also quickly our uh, textile lab here at Fraunhofer. Uh, Fraunhofer ISM is part of the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft, and we are specialized in applied and industrial contract research. So the institute focus is clearly on uh, packaging technologies and integration of multifunctional electronics into systems. Here at uh, Fraunhofer, we have been researching textile integrated electronics since the late 90s. And in, oh, I see you, Paul. <laughs> Since uh, um, yeah, 2009, we have our own textile laboratories. Um, they were yeah, founded for the purpose to have an interdisciplinary team working and sharing the expertise and equipment for research and development in the field. We call that lab text lab. And we also have a new lab since one year, it's called text bond. So what we're doing at text lab? First of all, we um, examine electrically conductive materials for the required application. We test and analyze all kind of uh, metallized or metal um, um, coated uh, fibers, threads, yarns, textiles. Then we also manufacture textile integrated uh, circuit boards. Some we do with standard technologies such as embroidery, but we also have developed own processes such such as uh, thermoplastic based soft circuits. I will introduce them later to you guys. Then one of our uh, key focus is the assembly and interconnection technologies. We use processes such as low temperature soldering or conductive gluing to interconnect electronics with uh, textile conductive material. But we also have developed um, more textile suitable contacting technologies such as adhesive bonding or ultrasonic welding. Also, encapsulation of electronic components is a part of our research in the field. Then we have the hard and software design. Here, the focus is on safe electronic functionality within the textile product. This includes textile bus systems with very, very long conductor lengths, EMC and ESD safety. But we also do a lot of uh, miniaturization um, for the electronic components to increase the variability and the overall reliability of the system. Last but not least, we have a lot of testing uh, equipment in house, so we can test the system according to electrical, mechanical, or climatic standards, and we can investigate in detail the failure mechanism to um, obtain a deep understanding of the failure. We work with uh, numerous customers and partners worldwide in all aspects of electronic textiles. This includes not only clothing, but also technical textiles, such as presented here, automotive interior or composite materials for lightweight construction. In the field of smart clothing, applications for health, therapy, elite sports, or protective equipment and workwear are um, in focus of our work and our collaborations. So maybe one introduction. For, for our motivation, the uh, fabrication of uh, electronic textile confronts the industry with uh, numerous challenges since the manufacture of textiles and electronics is not comparable. The production facilities and the materials differ in a lot of, uh, in all kinds of respects. Um, textiles, you know it, are very slack, materially, uh, slack materials, dimensionally unstable, anisotropically stretchable, but electronics are based on rigid or dimensionally stable uh, materials or substrates. Then I click again to pull away. So the problem with flexible circuit boards is that they can be bent only in one direction. So they are not body conformable and they are not textile conformable. To obtain textile characteristics, we have yeah, therefore undertaken numerous developments to make uh, electronic substrates stretchable and therefore also suitable for the textile integration. We came up with a new word for this. Uh, we call it conformable electronics, and that includes also technologies for e-textiles and smart textiles. And what's our concept for that? First of all, electronic components are hard. 
So we take these hard components, we miniaturize them, and we place them on hard or maybe even flexible interposers or islands. And these islands are connected with stretchable conductive tracks in between. So we create the overall stretchable systems. And one of our main technologies, it's called stretchable circuit board technology. I would like to present it to you more in detail. This is a um, development that started 2005 in another European research project called Stella. And this is also a success story for us because the technology um, has been commercially available for more and more industrial partners for a few years now. At the bottom left picture, you can see a commercially stretchable conductor tape from World Electronics, one of the largest manufacturers in Germany. Um, that is a company we transfer the technology and you can order it from them already. Um, what is really interesting about it, you can assemble electronic components using low temperature soldering processes. And you can also encapsulate the stretchable circuit boards with any kind of soft polymer as seen in this black uh, sensor, um, photo sensor. In the uh, middle picture, you can see the maximum production site, which is also the standard size in PCB production. And what's also really interesting for us who works in the e-textiles field, this technology is based on the use of thermoplastic elastomer films, which is why we can laminate this soft thermoplastic circuit boards on all kinds of textile materials. And last but not least, interesting for the uh, people working in the field of bioelectronics, instead of the usually copper conductor tracks, we can also use gold tracks, as you can see in the lower right photos, and that makes it suitable to be also implemented um, within the body. Last but not least, um, pre-assembled substrate can also be thermoformed 3D, as it can see in this um, yeah, 3D shaped lamp on the lower right side. The typical applications for stretchable circuit boards can be mostly found in the field of body-worn sensors. Um, body-worn sensors have a big advantage over yeah, conventional variables like smartwatches because they can pick up the signals from the body where you need it from. So this yeah, slide gives you a brief overview of the already developed demonstrators and yeah, commercially available products, which are mainly for therapy, health, and uh, workwear. In the area of fashion tech, yeah, still texture integrated lighting concept still uh, dominate the applications. Um, there's one example on the right side. So this texture integrated LED displays can ensure road safety as demonstrated by the sporty superhero jacket, which was awarded the Red Dot Design Award in 2013. Or it can be also worn as a design element directly as a skin patch. And here in this project with Uncle Lo, it was used to visualize body movements. I would also recommend to check this video link. You can, you can take a screenshot maybe, um, and you can really see that this is going beyond this traditional uh, e-textile concept because this technology can be stick to the body and can also take all the body movements and still fully functional. Then, we also see a lot of, uh, or we see current trends where um, health applications are combined with fashion design. Also, the next panel speaker, the reframe artists and collaborators, um, are working more in that field. And I think that will also give you more on the motivation goals and uh, implementation of fashion and tech, or tech and fashion after my presentation. Then, this textile circuit board, it's a follow-up of the stretchable circuit board. The goal was to have, or the aim was to have a more mechanically highly robust printed circuit board that can be permanently mechanically deformed and is even washable. So we create this by replacing the copper film from the stretchable circuit board with a laser structured conductive fabric. The technology overall we use here it's already available in the textile production. So commercialization of this so-called text PCB technology, it's conceivable in the near future. The first applications to be implemented, including RFID tags and textile labels, and also as work in progress in the reframe project, 
um, are dry electrodes for the EMG measurement. So this slide gives you a brief overview of the technology specification. If you're interested in that technology especially, please contact me afterwards. We are also looking for further collaborations, most likely in the areas of sensor technology or sensor application, and also the technology transfer into manufacturing for this tech PCB process. Then once we have the like um, textile or stretchable circuit boards. We also need a textile suitable interconnection technology. Um, now I would like to present you the adhesive bonding, which was also developed in-house. And the motivation for it that during standard assembly of electronics, which is soldering, textile or particle from textiles, so-called fibers, can defect the manufacturing environment. Also, many standard joining processes require elevated temperatures in solar ring it's usually or the peak temperature is usually around 250 degrees that would lead to decomposition or melting of most textile materials so there's also a lack of suitable low temperature interconnection technologies which is also hindering the spread of application for e-textiles until now so the industry is extremely interesting in new contacting methods which are working especially for electronic textiles. And this adhesive uh, bonding, what um, especially developed, which enables the integration of electronic models onto textile circuits. A process sketch is shown on the top right. There, you can see, is an adhesive placed between a PCB and the textile contact pad, and then bonded together using a tool that applies pressure and temperature only to the contact area. This reduces the thermal impact, and at the same time also realizing a mechanical and electrically reliable connection. This technology is suitable for various textile integrated conductors, for example, for embroidered or woven ones. And since several contacts can be made only in one step, also multi-IO boards can be placed on a textile bus. Um, as it can be seen on the lower left picture, where we created a tactile feedback system for our client. Um, last but not least, this technology has also uh, another unique feature. It allows the thermal assembly of electronic modules from the textile circuit board, and so creates new concept for recycling in e-textiles. Also something very important in the near future. Then, since there is or there was no equipment available for this adhesive bonding technology, we developed and built our own bonding device. The video on the upper right shows the complete contact process, including the component pickup, alignment on the textile contact pad, the bonding process, and also the optical control. So with this bonder, it was just finished last year, we can now contact uh, fine pitch modules on an air area of about like one to one meter. And first application, this like textile uh, displays can be also seen on this uh, photos here. And yeah, with that, I only had 10 minutes. I come to the end of my talk and thank you for your attention. Yeah, if you have any questions, please write here in the chat or contact me via email afterwards. Thank you. Wow, th thank you so much, Christian. This was really, really insightful. Um, and I think for our audience as well. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to, to um, hold the presentation and um, I'm really interesting, uh, interested to find out what's uh, happening in the audience because I see that everyone is very active in the chat. So uh, maybe my colleague Anish can let me let us know if there are any questions for for Christian. Uh, hi, Anna. Yes, indeed, we have a lot of questions <laughs> from the audience. Uh, so first of all, for Christian, it would be. Uh, Mayor Eidner, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, <laughs> has a question that how do you think uh, the smart textile market and the industry will be shaped after the COVID, so as per the current scenarios, and how will it affect the current market? So yeah, that's one thing. Okay. Um, I'm, I, I would think it will um, 
we will see more smart textiles product in the future because what smart textiles also allow it's a, a remote um, a treatment or therapy of patients mm -hmm. and um, so I will think we will see a lot more products in the near future in that field and um, beside that the smart textile have a bright future if you think about uh, security at work if you think about all these health applications which are already discussed and, and startups or large companies working on that um, I I'm very sure we will see in the next year some really uh, novel, innovative products. But the main issue is still the, the production of smart textiles. So that's why I was also focusing my presentation about these two new approaches to make reliable circuit boards and new approach to interconnect electronics. I think um, Great. If, if this is more spread into industry and the industry is unable to create um, products. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I guess that answers her. Uh, we also have one more question uh, from Ayaka Minami. So the question is, is it possible to apply stretchable electronics for hard paper? So that's like traditional paper made from woods. Um, <clears throat> Actually, we had a project in the past. We integrated textile RFID tags in the, in the uh, wood manufacturing. Yeah. So um, in that case, it was not laminated, but it was crimped on this on this tree. Okay. So, um, but I think on a on a thin hard piece of wood, I think it it, sh it should be possible because you have a kind of rough surface, and there will be some adhesion between this thermoplastic base. <laughs> circuits and the substrate. Great. Um, perfect. I guess that answers Aika as well. And we have a couple of similar questions. So I guess I will sum these questions in one <laughs> and just answer it. It's about the washability. So for example, uh, Sol Penis asked about, uh, in some part you mentioned about washable testing for TBC. And so it implies that now we can wash them and the circuits could still work. Uh, is it still possible or is it still in the testing phase is the question. Uh, we, <clears throat> we are testing um, washing, especially domestic washing in the house. We I have one uh, colleague, she's a real expert in washing uh, smart textiles. Um, it's this text PCB has a big advantage over the stretchable circuit board because the conductive material um, can uh, withstand more mechanical stress in the washing process. So once this material is fully encapsulated in a thin sheet of uh, TPU or another TPE, it makes it really washable. So we don't have this typical break of um, conductive wires, for example, or conductive tracks, which are based on um, copper film usually. So yes, so this is what we recommend to our clients. When washability is a key issue, please use or consider to use the text PCB technology. All right, perfect. Uh, I guess a lot of questions are coming for you, Christian. <laughs> but I guess I will sum up with just one different question. Maybe it answers other people as well. Uh, the question would be, are you working for the industry in Germany or it's all over the world? And the follow-up question is, where is the highest demand as of now on smart textiles? Right. Um, first question is, we work nationally and internationally, and we work both for direct research contracts, but also in uh, public funded uh, research projects. And that we're doing most likely in Germany and Europe, but uh, direct research interest we do internationally. And uh, the highest demand in products uh, I see in the health sector. All right, great. Perfect, Christian. So thanks a lot uh, for answering the questions and thanks a lot for all the people who asked the questions. Now I guess I will head back to Ioana. And yeah. Okay, side. then yeah. The, uh, thank you guys. I, I hope you got my email. So if your question cannot be answered today, so please send me an email. Um, if there are, thank you again, Christian, um, and uh, thank you for uh, thank you to our awesome audience.
who is super interactive and um, I hope your questions got to be answered. Uh, if not, uh, as Christian said, you can approach him um, or just um, you know, um, just uh, so you, uh, as an information, we have uh, also a LinkedIn group um, where we discuss um, also similar things like this. And um, our, um, so for example, Christian or our artist, um, they um, post uh, the developments of of their projects there. Um, I don't know if my colleagues have already posted the link uh, to the LinkedIn group in, yet in the chat, but if not, we're going to do it uh, shortly. Um, so um, again, keep the questions coming. That's really great. We're super happy to, to hear from all of you. Um, and to continue with, um, with our agenda for the webinar, um, I would like to introduce um, the moderator of our panel discussion, uh, Christiane Lugliebert. Um, she is the university. She's a university professor and a lead for fashion and tech uh, technology um, at the Kunstuniversität uh, in Linz in Upper Upper Austria. Um, so, hi, Christiane. Hi. <laughs> hi. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to moderate the panel discussion. Um, yes, sure. I, I know that your expertise is uh, very much welcome uh, in, in uh, finding out more about the artists and their projects. Yeah, nice to be with you. I, I even saw in the list of uh, people, there are a few reframe people <laughs> and, and other people we work together. So hi to everybody. Uh, the panel discussion we do in a way that first uh, each artist will introduce him herself with a few slides and then we do the discussion. So um, first I want to introduce you to our one of uh, Hub Berlin reframe artist Julia Tomasello. Julia is an interaction designer and for her project she already received several awards. Uh, also the European Starts Prize in 2018. Hello, Julia. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, and also an award in Japan, the Omosi Roi Award. I always hope I pronounce this right. I think it's a difficult word. And, and your uh, aim as a designer is to in, in, innovate women's healthcare, combining biotechnology and interactive wearables to raise awareness and provide alternatives to intimate self-care. So I think it's really a very interesting reframe project. So maybe you can talk a little bit about it. Sure. Okay, so let me share my presentation as well. Okay, you can see it? Yes, super. Okay. Okay, so everybody, Hello, I'm Giulia Tomasello, I'm an interaction designer and I'm Italian, but at the moment I'm based a little bit everywhere because of my work. So in my field, I work from biohacking, wearable computing, digital fabrication and biocouture that are different, like uh, we can say field where technology and the body are kind of playing together. So I really try every time to question this interaction between the human body and technology. And I do it especially in the field of uh, women's self-care and especially on the field of uh, women's social taboo. So Alma is the project I'm gonna tell you a little. This is, that is also part of Refrim Fund and it's a wearable biosensor for monitoring vaginal fluid. Um, the project started because there are the 75% of women that can suffer of vaginal infection worldwide, at least once in their lifetime. And from the 75, 8% can be a recurrent, meaning that they can have it a lot of the time in even a year. Therefore, we are developing a wearable biosensor that will be placed in the underwear and that can monitor the pH and lactate and lactic um, of vaginal fluid to try to prevent early bacterial vaginosis. Then this data will be sent to the phone, so the user will have an app that she can track and monitor her health every day, or mainly when she will have symptoms. So I'm working with my partner, Tommaso Busolo at the Carnarian Lab 
um, at the University of Cambridge. So we are developing the pH sensor and uh, we are also developing the old prototype of ALMA, taking uh, referencing from like smart uh, pad or smart tampons, so really going through, understand how technology can really play a role in the healthcare and in a topic that until now is still considered a taboo quite everywhere. And uh, what we are doing also is a kind of low-tech version of ALMA, so with no technology. And at the moment, since I'm at home, I'm developing uh, biotextiles based on agar-agar with natural uh, pH, so with red cabbage, to try to see if the, the vaginal fluid can really change the, the biotextile and so we can have like a, a color change in, uh, as, as a response that something is happening in our fluid. And uh, particularly, I'm working also on the user experience of ALMA because uh, one problem of technology is that most of the time we don't talk with women. So I'm making workshop with different women all over the world for now, Rio de Janeiro, Milan, Bangkok, Penang, and Switzerland, where we are really trying to co-create the prototype together with women. So if there is any women's organization in the uh, audience, please let me know because I would love to collaborate with, with you as well. We are also doing a survey that we are launching, we just launched, and that you can find online. I'm going to send now the link to really talk with every woman that actually we can't reach through the workshop. And a last call, I'm inviting fashion designers to actually collaborate with Alma. So if you are based in Brazil, Italy, Thailand, Malaysia, or Switzerland, you are a fashion designer working on the smart textile, please let me know. That's it. Super. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. As the next artist, I would like to introduce you to Jessica, Jessica Smart. Jessica, can, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Yes, super. So Jessica, she graduated from the Rhode Island School of Design and you have a background in textile design. You worked as a textile designer in New York for several years and then obtained a master in the Design Academy in Eindhoven. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your research project, Constructing connectivity, you aim to disrupt the standards of healthcare. So one of the most important fields for the smart uh, textile. So let us know a little bit about your project. Okay, great. Um, also share my screen. So, um, yes, I'm Jessica, as uh, Christiane already <clears throat> introduced and um, for the, yeah, I, I have a background in textiles, but I, I started to make a shift uh, over the last few years, um, as you'll see as I go through the slides here. Um, so constructing connectivity is a system for helping stroke patients to rehabilitate from home. And it uses a wearable sensor garment to measure movement and muscle activity and deliver audio visual feedback to stroke patients through a connected app. Um, a stroke occurs when oxygen cannot get to the brain and it causes the um, neurons in the brain to die. So this occurrence in the brain results in some form of physical paralysis for many stroke patients. And constructing connectivity brings a person-centered approach to medical technology. And that's why I say it disrupts the medical um, industry. Um, because just like this Kintsuki plate that we see here, um, the goal is to emphasize that beauty can come through the repair process. So our mission is to use beauty and creativity to sensitively stimulate and engage patients. So here you see a woman practicing activities in the home and receiving both creative and quantitative feedback. Um, so <clears throat> as Christian mentioned, constructing connectivity began in 2015 as my thesis project at Design Academy Eindhoven as a method for translating rhythmic body movement into textual designs for woven clothing. And then in 2017, I began transforming the concept into the current platform. So instead of weaving textiles, 
the pattern making process is linked to rehabilitation exercises. And the reason for this is that research indicates that linking multisensory feedback to patients' movements can attract more neural connectivity in the brain and help patients to make more new neural connections. So um, this project has benefited from three product development grants and each iteration has seen advancements in the concept and design. So with the Reframe grant, uh, I'm currently working with Fraunhofer to create the electro designs that you see here on the arm in the upper right. And this uses a process that Christian talked about uh, and that Fraunhofer developed, which laminates conductive textile inside thermoplastic material, which can be laminated to textile. And soon we will begin now the interconnection between these text PCBs and the electronic processing module. Um, you can also see that the design of the garment has evolved to a very minimal design. So just sleeves covering only the arms and shoulders where the electrodes need to be. So now we are at the stage of the development where we want to move from the technical requirements of the electrodes into the functional requirements for wearability and comfort, and also consider the aesthetic impact that the garment can have on the patient's mental and emotional well being. So, here the idea is to have a fine inner sleeve where the electronics are laminated, and then a second cover layer which can have areas that tighten around the sensors, which helps to improve the sensor feedback. And this second layer can also complete the garment and add a sense of comfort and beauty through the materials and the design. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I'm, <laughs> I have sound. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Now I would like to introduce the third artist and the third artist are actually two artists. Mm -hmm. It's Emanuela Corti and Ivan Farati. Hello, both of you. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. <laughs> and they formed together the design team with Sense. You are both coming from the field of inclusive design. And WITSENSE aims to improve the quality of people with learning and development disorders. In the Reframe project, your project is called Loveware, and it's a smart underwear that helps people of all abilities to self-explore and enhance the intimacy and the sexuality. So we are very curious to hear a few words about your project. Sure, let me introduce the project. Let me share the screen. Um, I'm, I'm Ivan Parati from the WITSENSE team, and I introduce you to Loveware, a wearable system that applies soft robotics to empower movement impaired to explore their own intimacy. Disabled sexuality is often neglected to, uh, to release caregiver and families from uncomfortable responsibilities, which pose moral and ethical questions. Whether the individual is deprived from his or her natural appetite or emotional and sentimental implication, what is really missing is the self-consciousness and awareness toward his or her own body. We want to give those people and their family some dignity through a technology that can let them explore their sexuality autonomously. We are focusing for the reframe grant on the female version, and that means that the wearer needs to feel sexy while wearing it. Loveware system is composed of three main elements, underwear panties, an external case unit, and a pillow. The underwear panties include some isolated chamber to generate a more natural sensation of a tactile movement on the skin surface and the genitals. The external unit contained pumps, mechanical parts, and electronics. We were initially envisioning something more portable, but as a first prototype, we thought it was a good idea to focus on performances to maximize the tactile effect. The pillow is an important element of the system since it works as a magnified interface where user gestures translate into underwear feedbacks. 
we are thinking anyhow to a growing system which functionalities could be extended. It is a challenging multidisciplinary project and our research and prototyping activities are directed toward multiple goals. We are working with an association through a psychologist we are collecting a screening survey and uh, research about uh, physiological and psychological dynamics involving arousal and intercourse. We map the, text, the sex toys industry uh, where there is already a range of products dedicated to disabled users. Uh, what we are focusing at the moment is the simulation of patterns that will generate dynamic behaviors on fabric once the fluid will flow through their cavities. This was initially planned to be a physical prototyping experience and one of the objectives of our co-creation activities at Fraunhofer Berlin. But since the lockdown is affecting our work plans, we took it as an opportunity. We realized that we could improve our chances of success modeling our prototypes in a virtual environment and a popular software became handy to our task, which we are using to generate the patterns that we can see in the simulation that is running in the video. And uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I hope to have the chance to connect uh, with you soon later on after the um, panel discussion. And uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, yeah. So, um, are you all here? Three artists. Yes, Jessica is here. Julia. <laughs> um, I I want to start with a question around this art tech collaboration. Uh, one of the very specific uh, uh, topics in Reframe is this art and tech that the artists collaborate with the, with the scientists. So uh, my first question would be to Jessica, how do you experience this art tech collaboration? How is this for you? Um, well, I, I really enjoy it, um, especially because I think this is the first time in <clears throat> the evolution of the project that um, I'm seeing real results with the, the work <laughs> in terms of the functionality. Um, so it was really interesting from the beginning for me to, um, to learn from what Christian had, has already developed, what he already um, knew could work or not. And, and so the first months we were really focused on um, what are different solutions we could try to get uh, a product that works. Um, but even, even so, even though we were so focused on the functional part, there's still a dialogue between, um, you know, how, how do you actually make it? So, um, there's that, but now as we're starting to kind of move into making a prototype, I mean, to me, what's also really important is to not just make a functioning medical product. In fact, that's, that's sort of my criticism from what I see out there already. What I really want to bring is um, something that also enhances the um, emotional experience of the patient. And that's where um, the design comes in. And uh, something that, as you saw in my presentation, I show on the arm, the armband is inside out because I want to show what the product looks like. When that's turned the other way, everything we're creating is becomes invisible. So that was um, sort of something that came to my mind about what might be interesting is to use this kind of sheer knit construction that would actually reveal this, you know, you can say beautiful technological structure that we're creating on the inside. Um, so, but now, uh, now I'm working with a company um, to, to advance on that. And now the next step will be what we make in the knit, how is that going to relate now when I bring it back to Fraunhofer and we have to apply the electronics? So I think it's it's a back and forth and at every stage, I mean, I'm in communication with Christian to kind of like check in um, how it goes. I saw also that on the on the list, there are some, some designers listening us. So maybe also an interesting question would be, um, how deep did you dive into technology? How how quickly did you speak the same language with Christian? Was it difficult to to align the project to understand each other? 
Is that a follow up for me? Or? Yeah, it's a follow up for you. I was in because I thought this de for designers, it could be really interesting. How deep do you have to dive into that technology? Yeah, I mean, of course, like I'm I am never going to uh, have what Christian has in his brain in my head. I mean, but but it's also not necessary. I mean, I personally, I don't find any problems with it because uh, he's able to um, sort of inform me about the things that are important. Um, and I, you know, I mean, I find it quite understandable. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, a lot of what we're doing is like, I'd say material science. So mm -hmm. um, that, that part is quite easy to connect with. So some areas where um, I mean, I've had to act, learn a little bit more is really about how the electronics part work, you know, and then I've, uh, but it's still, you know, I think he's able to, explain things enough that yeah. I start to become familiar. And I think as a lot of designers, I learn when I actually do it. Um, probably a lot of people in general. So talking is one thing. It's when you're actually in the lab making it, then you say, oh, okay, it's not, you know, it's not so, no, not so difficult, not so inconceivable. Yeah, interesting. And Jesse, uh, Julia, how about you? Um, how did you experience this co-creation? What and maybe what was the main challenge for you in this co-creation process? I think you are muted. You have to. Un yeah, yeah, no, now it's good. <laughs> I was okay. Uh, let's say that um, I've been always working on a multidisciplinary field, so always trying to co-create with different. Um, like in different fields, like with different like skills of people. And I found it very interesting now to work with somebody that can also be linked to a company. Because of course, like most of the time we work between freelancers or, or PhD students. So this time I'm kind of, my head is changing thinking that actually we are producing something, we're like designing something that can be one day maybe on a line for a production. So actually, that is kind of changing my way of co-creation and I'm developing much more also the language that I, I need to kind of uh, create in between different skills. So really like to fill this, the gap in between like me talking with a scientist. So every day is a constant learning and I'm, I'm quite happy to work with different uh, people because I think it's the best, especially for us as a designer, because otherwise it will always kind of be in the same... Uh, small circle but actually if we take feedback all the time even from from the fashion but also from the like, psychologists like the doctors it's just like enriching the whole project and making it more complex so it's, it's great mm -hmm. and Ivan and Emanuela uh, what was the main learning for you out of this co-creation because the goal is also like the the the, the scientists learn in the co-creation from the artists, but also the artists learn from the tech, from the scientists. What was the main learning for, for both of you? Uh, well, I believe we are learning every day, actually, because uh, since uh, this is a multidisciplinary project, actually there are uh, a variety of aspects that are included. So uh, the technological aspect, material engineering aspect, uh, psychological aspect. So we are facing every day uh, the psychologists, for example, and um, we learn a lot of things. Actually, you now we are uh, we just started to distribute a questionnaire uh, among uh, people with disabilities to learn more about their direct experience. So I believe we will learn a lot more. Um, of course, uh, we are learning also um, a software. To, uh, especially because of COVID, uh, we can't access any lab. So we are experimenting with the software, simulating the inflation and deflation of the material. So I believe uh, every day there is uh, a new challenge or something new to learn. And um, for, uh, from the co-creation phase with um, working with Christian at Fraunhofer, I believe it's also important to uh, find a common uh, terminology and common language that we need to share while working because most often designers and scientists talk a completely different language so mm -hmm. 
uh, but we um, are also aiming, often aiming at the same goals. So we need to align first on these languages and vocabularies mm -hmm. and terminology, and then everything becomes quite easier and quicker. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, how is this situation at the moment affecting you in the co-creation? Can you somehow continue the, the process or is this on hold because you need the lab? Yeah, how is this partially, partially it's on hold, actually. Partially no, it's on hold, but as we said, uh, we took it as an opportunity to use mm. this software and that uh, would simulate the inflation of the fabric and then uh, we can uh, kind of um, augment our uh, productivity in this way. So once uh, the lab will be uh, open uh, again and we'll be able to assess it, we can select and we can um, test a, a much uh, uh, wider range of uh, different uh, samples and that and we can pre-select, um, pre-screen uh, how those sample works in, in the virtuality. And uh, we are also working with the um, material um, engineer uh, in our team. And uh, while um, Valeria, she's also part of the audience. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi, Valeria. And uh, <laughs> she will, um, she will uh, take care Thanks of so uh, the um, more uh, scientific and measurable uh, data of these experiences, working on pressure uh, and the um, flow and the volumes of the inflatables while we are working more on the uh, how the fabric reacts uh, on our uh, virtual simulations yeah, so yeah. at the moment uh, it's uh, the impact is there but uh, we kind of making virtue out of it yeah, even mm -hmm. uh, another collaborator who is Ison who is also in the attendees uh, uh, was supposed to be in the lab so at the moment she is collaborating uh, remotely and um, yeah, we're looking forward to, to, to do some practical tests, but at the time, yeah. at the moment, we don't know really how to do stuff. Imagine the same for you, Jessica and Julia. Um, yeah, well, we moved, we were kind of always somehow in a smart working because I was traveling and my, um, my partners in, in, in the work are based in London or Cambridge and, and then Kristen and the others are in Germany. So now we just moved uh, from a high tech version to think also the low tech version. So I'm really in a kind of DIY at home working with okay. biotexels. And then our engineers are working more to demonstrate on a field like uh, the hypothesis that it will work. And then as soon the lab open, we go back to test it. And we are also really focusing on the user experience part. So mm -hmm. now that I have time, I'm really just diving through like uh, mm -hmm. different communities and also I'm developing now the workshop that I was doing in real. I'm, do, I'm preparing it also online. It's gonna be exciting and challenging, but um, mm -hmm. I'm really trying to really take this time to, to, yeah, to research what, we, what we, women really want, like from more an educational point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would just quickly add that, like, I've, I feel fortunate I've been able to find, um, for example, a manufacturing partner that I've, well, or development manufacturing that I can already start working with. I think the harder part is that I'm working in healthcare and the therapists that I normally would contact, um, their, their clinic has been turned into uh, a COVID-19 hospital at this moment. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that that is something that adds a challenge but i have to say in general i feel pretty fortunate that it hasn't yeah. it hasn't stopped the project for me yeah oh, good so it sounds sounds quite good from all of you i was wondering for this co-creation is there any question from the public now joanna i just don't know how i see if people have questions would you tell me if there are questions for the co-creation from um, the public mm -hmm. so um i would like to ask anish to because he's the one monitoring our q and a section and um as i understand there are some questions for our artists so i'm gonna give the the word to to anish uh yes Joanna and christiana uh, we have a lot of questions mm -hmm. from the audience <laughs> and it's like really great to have such a positive response based on all your three projects that you're doing so that's really positive 
That's really great. Uh, so firstly, I would like to ask a question from Silke uh, for Julian. Uh, that would be, firstly, she congratulates on your project. <laughs> and her question is that, is there any restrictions uh, in terms of countries or specific demographics or regions regarding the call of fashion designers for your project? And if yes, if why? Mm. Um, well, the restriction I created kind of, or let's say I address it to the countries have been developing already um, a workshop because we have been collecting data. So we have been collecting local data specifically from these countries. And it will be interesting to see how fashion designer based in that countries can develop their own version of what it could be the Alma Andes. Uh, but let's say that um, I'm open. I mean, this is it's really like another aspect of the co-creation, really trying to see how this project can also be perceived from an artistical aspect, because what we are going to develop is something functional, which can probably not really respond uh, truly and fully uh, of a kind of fashion tech that you could see on a catwalk, but much more something that you could see one day on the sh in the shop and then in your cupboard to use it. So let's say that I'm open. So please just, just text us, just email me and, and we can talk about it. I'm, I will be very happy. Great, I guess that answers more or less the question for her. Uh, perfect. Uh, one question uh, specifically for Jessica, uh, it would be based on the sustainability aspect. So the question is from Patrick and he's asking like, how are you considering the sustainability aspect with respect to the end of life of your potential product? So how would it be at the end of the cycle and how are you supposed to deal with it? Um, You're muted. <laughs> sorry, forgot to unmute. Um, yeah. I mean, at one point, uh, there was an idea of being able to exchange the, the sleeves, but uh, currently something we've been looking at is just about like the, the product itself, how you separate the electronics from the, um, the rest of the garment uh, so that it could be recycled and reused. So, I mean, if you look, if you think about this, the sleeves, um, there's the textile component and then there's the text PCB that's laminated. And then, um, then there's the, the electronics. So one thing uh, in terms of like a business model, one idea is, is about how to get patients to return uh, the product so that we can, for example, reuse those processing modules. I mean, that's, that makes um, a lot of sense if, if we could um, reuse those modules. And then another thing in terms of material sustainability, um, so one test we did early was just to see like, can you, can you delaminate the, t the, the text PCB from the textile after you laminate on a fabric? And by reapplying heat, you can. But something that's interesting now um, that we're starting to trial is um, within the knit design itself, uh, knitting with a TPU yarn in the areas where the text PCB should be laminated. Um, and yeah, the idea there being that you, it's very easy then to separate, um, very easy maybe first to laminate it together, but also to separate um, exactly where those electronics are from the textile so that there can be uh, recycling. All right, great. So I guess, yeah, that pretty much gives a clear picture to the to Silke in terms of like how it happens. <laughs> so yeah, thanks, Jessica. And then the last question, I guess, for Ivan and Emma. <laughs> so that would also be from, I uh, guess, Tasia. So she asked, like, how difficult is it for you guys in terms of being independent designers to develop smart textiles or, like, source your e-textile componentry? So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we are independent designer, and we, uh, but we have a, a small startup and a partner based in Italy that is already a pioneer in conductive yarn and sensorized garments. So um, kind of already introduced to the environment for us is kind of easier. But I believe uh, there are plenty of platform online nowadays where um, people that are approaching this field can 
rely on in order to um, find resource, resources in general, but also uh, sources of supplier. And um, of course, nowadays, uh, uh, supplier are not uh, always demanding for uh, quantities, but they can also provide a small amount of um, products for, for testing and for sampling. And uh, so it's becoming more and more, uh, it's becoming easier uh, for designer to mm, test and also to use uh, simple prototyping devices and uh, a platform like Arduino and other uh, stuff that can be customized or can be kind of um, mm, turned into your own specific uh, tool. So I think. Um, mm, it's difficult at the beginning, but then once you get to know the environment and the resources, it's uh, becoming quite uh, uh, easy. And there are plenty of platforms that offers like um, small, um, like small quantities or tailor-made kind of solution for people that are doing their own projects. So I, I believe you will be in good hands. Great, Iman. I guess this helps a lot. Are, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. I've, I've seen there are a few questions in the Q and A. Uh, I don't know whether we should answer now. Maybe we can leave uh, our context. Uh, exactly. So the part of the thing is like uh, we are also answering these uh, questions separately, but it's also like we are bringing in to have a, like a broader discussion. So yeah, <laughs> so we are also doing that. Great. But also, Iman, I guess it's like a very good approach you said because we have a lot of aspiring new like designers who want to do and be something like you. And that helps you in the way, like explain, like now with the resources, you have a lot of potential in the market to come up and develop something which you are doing. So I guess that's a great thing as well. <laughs> uh, so I guess from the Q&A section, uh, that would be uh, it from us because of the time constraint. Uh, and I will give it back to Christiana. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Even I had some questions and they are also now already answered. So this was a similar question then from the public. <laughs> Joanna, do we have still time for a few questions? Uh, maybe a Joanna, uh, data like. Um, I think maybe one more question. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had a, I had more um, another question for for Julia, more for the product itself. Do you already have experience uh, for this digital function of of your product for your for your client or for the for the potential use, user? So how does the people react if there is now it's not underwear but it's an underwear who who has has a function can can do something and a digital function how do the people react to that um well this is an interesting question because actually the field is quite new well let's say that wearable technology is there since a while but in the market we can't really find um wearable clo like technological clothes but much more accessory and then when you when you talk about lingerie when and you connect technology yeah, it, it can be scary at the beginning. Um, this is why somehow I'm developing the workshop because I need to understand how far I can go even to integrate a specific technology in the underwear because we are talking about something very intimate and also the all intimate care, I believe that has been never really talked through. Like, so even between women, we don't really have the knowledge or the, the yeah, the method, not the, the knowledge, let's say to talk about it truly. So I'm really trying with the workshop and with the survey, which is also made kind of with question and some educational part to really understand truly how I can help. Because really this project for me, it's mainly for us, like that we have this, these issues every day or like during our, well, every day hopefully not, but during our life. And so I hope that by just integrating the, the user itself in the conversation, so this participatory design, I can make something that the, then they can like find it interesting because I'm sure that if I will just place it now in the market without zero explanation or integration for them to understand what it is, of course, there will be no client at all because mm -hmm. it's just something too new and too, too scary. Mm -hmm. So you need to, to really create a, um, 
a field now. And I guess that the our three projects are really based on, on this, really like trying to create like a, to the to the user like a comfortable scenario where they can see using the product we are developing. That they are the three of us, like we are really work on the edge of healthcare and technology. So mm -hmm. Very interesting. Joanna, I would have two more very short questions. Do we have time for that or we are running out of time? If you manage to keep it really, really short. <laughs> I ask for very short answers, for very short answers. Yes, please so, go ahead. <laughs> your project looks to me already quite close to a commercialization. Are you in contact with people to really bring this on the market in a very short time? Mm, well, I wouldn't say very short, just also because medical technology, it's, you know, you, you have to prove that something works and there's trials you need to go through. But on the other hand, um, it's getting closer and closer. So now um, I've uh, partnered with Knitwear Lab in in the Netherlands. And it's a great, I recommend to anyone listening, if they're looking, knitwearlab.nl. What's nice is that we'll be developing the prototype together and they have connections um, for producing it in other factories. Uh, so that then I'm, I'm looking forward then to, to understanding how we can go from um, making the prototype to understanding how do you actually scale it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. And uh, I have a last question. Um, is Christian still, uh, can you hear us, Christian? Sure, I'm still here. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> I have a last question to you and to Ivan for maybe maybe just one or two words. So what, in your vision, what is the next very visionary product? Like what is the next iPhone? What do you think will be the changing product? <laughs> no, it's, this is, a <laughs> or Ivan, do you have something, a last? Statement? Wearable technology. <laughs> no, <laughs> just uh, um, I would say wearable technology because so far, um, if you mentioned that to anyone, they would think about smartwatch or something like uh, a gadget. But uh, uh, nobody immediately connected to something that clothes that you wear and you and they do something and they collect something from yourself. So, uh, um, but I would say as well that. This innovation won't come from the industry, the traditional industry uh, that is um, addressed to like fashion, for example, fashion industry, extremely refractarian to innovation. And if you look at um, techno emerging technologies like uh, uh, self-driving car, they don't come from car manufacturer, they come from outsider of the game, like Google mm -hmm. or, um, or Tesla, for example. So um, I would say that um, would be an uh, who would innovate the wearable technology and the fashion industry in general would be an outsider of this field. Mm -hmm. Not not sure about what will be there, like display kind of uh, um, sweater or some sort of. Um, mm, like augmenting, uh, definitely augmenting. So there are different branches, different uh, direction we can explore, but mm -hmm. something would be there soon, mm -hmm. I hope. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much to all of you. I think if there are questions from the audience, you will, you will see that, right? Yeah, we still have the, the chat option. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Christiane, for moderating the panel discussion. And thank you to the Berlin artists for sharing, uh, sharing their experience so openly. And um, you are definitely all displaying perfect examples of co-creation and of uh, art tech transfer. And, you know, we work really close with all these projects and we know that they really put their hearts and souls uh, into, into their work. And uh, we're super excited to see the prototypes at the end of the first call. So thank you again, everybody. Um, and I would like to maybe hear again from the audience. Let's see um, 
what's going on there. Maybe Anna, my colleague, can jump in quickly and um, let us know what's happening. Sure, I would like to give a small overview of people who we had today in our audience. Um, it's nice to see how interactive they are. And we have people from Finland, Spain, Argentina, Japan, Germany, and America. And what is the most interesting, we have 33% um, of creative people who are interested in a topic, and also 11 people who 11% of people would like to find the solution for their future pro uh, products. Uh, also, half of the audience already worked with smart textiles, and 34% um, would love to be a part of a project and apply as an artist to reframe project. Um, also, um, from our poll, we can see that in five years, products probably like textile products probably will be available on the market. And this is, I would love just to do a smart over, sm small overview of what's going on in our chat. So right now, maybe I can give word back to Jana. Thank you for, for chatting. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much for the overview and thank you for our audience for um, for interacting so much with us and um, telling us their opinion, telling us what they're up to. Um, and uh, again, thank you. Um, yeah, thanks for everyone. It is really cool. Um, what um, what I also wanted to share with you guys is uh, that we're in Berlin is. Uh, launching a series of events. Um, this uh, this webinar was a part of the Reframe uh, framework, but we're launching um, a, a series of online events, and we're happy that um, you are gonna also join us there. Just keep you know sign up for the newsletter and follow us on social media, and you'll find out more information about this. Um, and um, unfortunately, we're really behind on time. So uh, the breakout rooms, we will, um, we promise we will uh, get, uh, we will experience this in the next events. Um, and uh, maybe some uh, last words. Um, as I was telling you earlier, uh, there are three hubs um, in Reframe. Um, uh, we are the Berlin hub, but there's also one in Linz and one in uh, Valencia. They are focused on sustainability and 3D printing. And um, the second call for um, for the Reframe project is uh, going live in uh, at the beginning of July. So you can start applying if you think one of the three challenges um, applies to you. Um, we would love to see your projects and maybe get to work together um, in the second call. Uh, you already got to see a bit of how co-creation works and how it looks like. Um, and I hope it, it motivated you um, as much as we, we enjoyed sharing. Um, just another reminder, we also have another, um, we have a LinkedIn group where our, all of our artists, for example, uh, and uh, scientists in the Reframe project, and not only, um, all the, uh, like a lot of people in the industry are sharing um, the development of their, pro of their projects, they're sharing insights, they're looking for people to collaborate with. So we really welcome, we invite you to join our uh, LinkedIn group. Um, my colleagues posted it already in the, in the chat, but I think, um, I think, yeah, I think we posted it already. Um, so please join, uh, let's get in touch. It's a perfect opportunity to get in touch with us, with everybody. Um, and um, we would also, we really appreciate your feedback. So um, we would uh, love to get your yours on, on the event that we did today. Um, you're gonna automatically receive a, a Google form. Um, and I really hope you fill it out and you tell us what you thought. Um, thank you again to uh, Christian, our keynote speaker, to Christiane, who moderated the panel discussion, Ivan um, and Emma from Loveware, uh, Julia from um, Alma, Jessica from Constructing Connectivity, and least, uh, last but not least to, the, to our Wear It team. Uh, I think you can also see them. Um, mm -hmm on the screen. 
Um, and thank you again, everybody, for, for participating. 